All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started here. Um, just so, because I've been getting different reactions. No, this is not a different man that, that is in your screen. If those of you looking, uh, I, I uh, decided to shave my goatee off after like 17 <laughs> years, just to give my skin a little foliation, you know, something like that. And my, uh, my daughter looked at me and was like, who is this man in my house? Because uh, she's never really seen me. Uh, she's only seen me once as a child, and she cried uh, the first time I, I did this. So uh, it's, it's starting to even grow back a little bit. So I, I just wanted Amen. to, just in case, uh, my personal trainer, when I took my mask off yesterday, uh, jumped back and got nervous or whatever. So I told him I'm still the same guy. So I just want to let y'all know. I said, well, let me let me just start off acknowledging uh, that I may look a little different. I thought I looked younger, though, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. So uh, with that being said, um, welcome to uh, Brentwood Sunday School. For those of you that are joining us, it's good to see and hear everybody. Good to see and hear everyone saying good morning. Uh, I'm just so uh, glad to be with you guys, uh, as they would say, once more and again. Um, uh, and brother... Uh, um, Brother Ford uh, corrected me uh, last week that I was uh, incorrect on the number of weeks. Uh, and I don't know if he's on the line uh, here, but uh, if he is, I'd ask that he uh, let me know how many weeks again. Because I was. 47. 47. 47. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you sir. <laughs> Good to hear your voice, Brother Ford. I just want to make yeah. sure that was a sly way for me to check on you. Uh, Amen. So, Amen. so I'm, glad, I'm glad to see you there. So. Week 47, guys, we've been doing this for 47 uh, weeks. Uh, wow. And so um, and that's amazing. If you think about it, it is now February 7th. The lockdown happened around March. So we're, we're, uh, we're March 15th. Yeah, March 15th. That'll be our one year uh, anniversary of being online. That's crazy, right? The time flies uh, when you're having fun. Uh, and so we're having fun as far as Sunday school is concerned. So just uh, thankful that for you guys uh, uh, again. All right, so this week's lesson is on page 75, page 75. The uh, lesson title is uh, Intimacy with God, Intimacy with God. The point, prayer draws us closer to Jesus as our hearts align with his. The point is prayer draws us excuse me, closer to Jesus as our hearts align with his. The memory verse comes from, and sorry, the verses are, uh, for those of you that may not have the book, are John 17, verses 1 through 5, and then 21 through 26. John 17, verses 1 through 5, and then 21 through 26. Our memory verse can be found in John 17 and 3, and it reads, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and the one you have sent, Jesus Christ. Again, mm -hmm. memory verses, John 17, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and the one you have sent, Jesus Christ. Three points of the lesson this week uh, are uh, pray for God's glory, pray for unity, and pray for God's love. So again, that's pray for God's love, pray for unity, and uh, pray for God's glory. All right, so those of you just joined us, page 75, Intimacy with God, uh, John 17, 1 through 5, and uh, 21 through 26. And as we've done for these now 47 weeks, I would ask uh, Brother Walker to lead us in an introductory. Let us bow. Gracious Father, we open up this morning by telling each other good morning. We want to say good morning to you, God, and thank you. Thank you from the heartfelt, deepest part of our hearts for what you do for us each and every day. First of all, your darling son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for the remission of our sins. Thank you for giving us each day, Father, regardless of the weather, regardless of our situations, that we're alive and we realize that we're alive only because of you and we give all praise to you. We thank you for our church, Brentwood. We thank you for our pastor, Rev. Joe Samuel Ratliff and his wife. We thank you for all churches that are open this morning, Father. 
we especially thank you for these 47 weeks of being able to have Sunday school virtually, Father. We know that your word will prevail. You always allow for your word and your promise to be fulfilled. And we thank you, Father. We ask that you continue to bless us and we'll continue to reflect all the love that you bestow upon us each and every day back to you and to each other. It is these blessings we ask in our son Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 All right, guys. I'm having a little technical difficulty over here, so let me get it right. All right. So, title, Intimacy with God. Uh, I, I'm taking the first point uh, this week. Um, our point is prayer draws us closer to Jesus as our hearts align with us. Our first point of the lesson is pr uh, pray for God's glory. So I'm going to start off by reading uh, the scripture that is covered in that lesson, which is John, uh, John 17, 1 through 5. And in the lesson uh, scripture, uh, it says, Jesus spoke these things, looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glory by your son so that the son may glorify you. Since you gave him authority over all people so that he may give eternal life to everyone you have given him. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and the one you have sent, Jesus Christ. I have glorified you on the earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, glorify me in the presence that with the glory I had that with you before the world extended. So here we have Jesus, uh, and, and I'm, I'm gonna y'all know me in the in the in the again the Message Bible. Um, uh, I I, I want to read that version and then I'll, I'll I'll get started here. So the Message version of this same scripture one through five says Jesus said these things. Then raising his eyes in prayer, he said, Father, it's time. I gotta stop there. <laughs> Father, it's time. I get excited just because he said it's time. Like everything I've come to do is time. All right, so Father, it's time. Display the bright splendor of your son so the son, in turn, may show you bright splendor. You put him in charge of everything human so he might give you real and eternal life to all in his case. And this is the real and eternal life, that they know you, the one and only true God and Jesus Christ whom you sent. I glorify you on earth by completing down uh, to the last detail, what you assigned me to do. And now, Father, glorify me with your own, very own splendor, the very splendor I had in your presence before there was a world. Father, it's time. Father, it's, it's time. It's time to fulfill uh, your, uh, my mission. And so this is a study about intimacy with God and ultimately, the way you become intimate with God is through prayer. It's through prayer. And so I decided to be a little bootleg alliteration preacher today. Uh, and so, uh, uh, and I said alliteration in that, uh, you know, Peter Piper pick, that's alliteration with all the P's. So I decided, so so God, right before I, I finished writing some paper last night, God, I was literally getting up from this desk right here in my home office and God said, do the P's. And I said, oh, uh, I said, well, what P's you want me to talk about? And he just boom, 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 boom. All right. So I'm I'm a, I'm gonna do the P's real quick. So prayer, P, get it, right? Prayer is first and foremost personal. Prayer is first and foremost personal. And what do I mean by that? Our scripture today shows us that prayer uh, is personal. Why is it personal? First, let me use the uh, the message uh, version. It says, then raising his eyes in prayer. So when you, when, when you, I know we're on screen right now, I'm taking my glass up, so I see my eyes. When I'm, I'm looking at Brother Walker right now, right? Mm -hmm. I, like if we were together, it, it's personal when, it's, when, when I look at my eyes to you, right? It's personal mm -hmm. since, when I'm, I'm looking uh, at your suit, Brother, uh, Brother Guillory, I see him in the back there, uh, not driving this week, but, but I see, right, it's, it's personal, right? Mary Quimby, I see you, Brother Gant, right? It's personal. So I'm looking at the camera right now, but if I was with you, it's personal, and, and, and so the first sign that this prayer, 
right? One of the last prayers Jesus will do. Like the first sign that this prayer is personal is that he looks his eyes to the sky. He looks at his father, right? So prayer is personal. It, it is about, you can pray for other folks, but the intimacy comes in the personal part of the prayer with uh, God. And then he addresses the, he addresses the prayer to his father. It's, you can't get more personal than that. Right? Mm -hmm. His father is time. Father, the hour has come. Going back to the, the version that's in the uh, book, right? And so again, this intimate. So you can tell God anything you want because it's personal, right? That's how you become intimate with anybody, a friend, a spouse, right? You tell them things that you might not tell everyone else, right? It's a personal relationship. So my first P, right, if this was, it's not a sermon, I just, this is a lesson, but if I was doing this, I would, you know, those, you know, P, first P, prayer is personal, right? It is personal. And this scripture proves it. Throughout the scripture, he says, Father, it's time, um, Display uh, the bright splendor to your son. I'm your son. Just do what you said you were going to uh, do. Show these people the splendor of your love, right? That we're going to deliver on this promise. So prayer is personal, right? Number two, prayer, in order to pray, you must be present. Another P, another P. You got to be present, right? So it's hard to pray. I don't know if you guys have ever gone through the just the rudimentary, elementary routine of just prayer. Okay, it's just time to pray, right? It's just time, it's just time. That's what we do at night before night, you know, or in the morning, whatever your time is, pray. But how many of you are praying, but your mind is somewhere else? You're doing it as a function of routine, but you're not present, right? In today's culture, they call that mindfulness, right? Being present, right? And so you have to be present to make it personal, Oh, I didn't even the, we got to be present to make it personal. In other words, you got to be in the moment thinking uh, about your relationship with God, thinking about the things that you're saying. And so here we have Jesus, glorify your son, uh, uh, make, he may glorify since you gave him authority over all people. So he's having a conversation with a God. So not only is it personal, but he's present in the moment, right? Mm -hmm. He's present in the moment. So I would encourage you, it's something I struggle with because I don't know about you, but when I get up in the morning, I'm still grinding and hustling out here in, in these uh, in these uh, secular streets, <laughs> um, you know, trying to get my business and, and prayer view and everything. So a lot of times in the morning, I wake up, my mind is already, okay, you got to do this and then you need to call mm -hmm. such and such and then boom, you got to study and you got to write this. And it's not even, I'm trying to sit up, okay, focus and, and it's time to pray, right? And so I've had to kind of, I have a routine now. I want y'all want to know this. Get up, first thing to do, make the bed, go, you know, get, get my beauty on, right? Put on my clothes. And when I, when I sit down to put my shoes on, my wife has put a little bench in our, in our um, bathroom. When I sit down to put my shoe uh, on, I, I try to stop thinking about all the things I have to do. And after I put my shoes on, I stand on that bench. And that's my prayer bench. That's what I've decided. Right. So I had to put it as a part of my routine and as a part of my routine, I had to say, OK, by the time you're sitting down to put your shoes on, your mind needs to be clear so that you can be present with God. Right. Now, some of you do that immediately when you get out of bed, some of you do whatever you do it, but you got to be present. Right. In order to make it personal, you, you have to be present. So that's second piece, uh, present. Right. Your and your prayers do not have to be prolific. The therapy, that's prolific, that's therapy, right? They don't have to be, you know, grandiose and, 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 and sound like the Pharisee, you know, you don't have to be I, I Kevin Rouse, uh, in the wondrous of the might of, no, no, no. You know, I, and, and, and the way that's exemplified in this first, Father, it's time. It's just time, right? It's, it's real simple. It's, it's not anything... Uh, pro, now it's 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 prolific in the concept of being Christians and things of that nature, uh, but it's just time, uh, and so they don't have to be prolific, right? He's just talking about it's time, God, to 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 Father, to do the things that you told me you're gonna do, and then the memory verse: This is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and the one that you have uh, sent, Jesus Christ. He's praying for us, centuries after. He's praying for us that that we may know Him. 
right? That's that's really a simple, it's not necessarily, it's prolific in its meaning, but as far as the conversation and intimacy, it's 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 not very, very complicated. And so I know y'all lot, lot, many of you are, are wiser slash older than, than me. And so this might just be a reminder, but in my mind, I used to think, you know, I had to pray like the brothers at the when I was younger in the Tyree Chapel Amy Church in Bay City, Texas, they had this thing called devotion. So when you got to church early, because we always got to church early, then you'd have these brothers up front and then they would be like, you know, y'all know what devotion is, what it uh, uh I love <laughs> Praise the name, I love praise the name. Father, and then, then Deacon Walker would, uh, would get on up up and pray, and Father God, and it kind of a hum, and it was kind of all mixed with the music. It was like a whole production, right? Yeah, I yeah. To, man, yeah. man, yeah, I, I ain't never, I ain't never, you know, that's some praying right there with the whole production level praying, right? I mean, like the whole, uh, and then some of them would pray, like just. Uh, Father God, we just want to thank you. And then someone will pray and sing at the same time. Y'all, y'all remember this? I'm, 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 right? right? Mm -hmm. and, and now I, I think it, it, you know, I get excited to think about it. But then it was intimidating. And then my grandmother would make me put my hand down, and I want to look. You know, put your hand. You supposed to, you know. And so I'm getting corrected into some, you know, beating the child. I mean, it's all everything it was a whole, whole lot going on. Uh, uh, and so. Uh, I say all that to say that I used to think that that's how you have to pray. And sometimes that's still in the back of my mind where I feel like I'm not being eloquent uh, enough, right? I'm not being um, clear enough. I need to sound educated when, when I pray to God. No, he knows my heart. I can just have a conversation. And right now I got to the point, especially in this pandemic where God, I, I mean, we got to talk, bro. I mean, like, ooh, Lord. I mean, I have to talk to him like my, my friend because he is my friend, right? He is my friend. And so your prayers don't have to be prolific. And then mm -hmm. I know it was coming. Prayer is powerful. That's the fourth P. It's powerful. It's yeah. powerful, right? Prayer is powerful. Prayer, let me, let me, prayer changes things, right? Prayer changes things. It literally changes our health. It literally, that's, that's been studied in the part that's been uh, studied. It literally changes our health. And a lot of times in modern culture, it's like, you know, what's your energy? I, you know, I want to make sure, I, I think I posted yesterday, I'm, I'm on this uh, energy, uh, you, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. That's the energy I'm on. So that's what kids, they like to talk about energy, right? So prayer is energy, right? Amen. And energy is neither created nor destroyed. It is just transferred, right? That's a, that's a physics law. Right? And so what that means is that the prayer that you give is it literally is physically and mentally powerful, right? So yeah. prayer is personal. You have to be present. It is, you don't have to be prolific. And of course, prayer is powerful. And that's the end of my alliter alliteration on the point of pray for God's glory. All right. Yeah. Amen. Rem Kevin. Amen. But one thing about those those deacon prayers and uh, the uh, sisters didn't come up and pray, but it was over on that mother's bench what, what carried those deacons when they would come in and come in with the songs and get late in the evening. The sun is almost down, you know. Lord, please help me. All of those short songs while the deacon was praying. That's when the spirit got lifted in there. Man, but they, yeah, they weren't the ones that go, would go up and pray. But I venture to say later on, as I got old in my church, there were sisters that could get up on there and pray just as well as those deacons that were down up front. But uh, I just brought back a memory, just a flashback there. Hey Amen. That front bench was real. That front bench, yeah. on, uh, that front yeah. pew, absolutely. That front pew, and they used to dress in white and sit over on that right yes, side in my yes, church. Sir. And they, they could pray too, just as well. Amen, amen. My topic uh, has to do with topic two that says pray for unity. I'm gonna read the scriptures real quickly and then I can think we can, we can quickly fast forward and see that, that Jesus was praying in these scriptures. You can, it, it's, it's, it's just obvious what he was praying for, for us. And also before I read, you know, that prayer shifted, you know, like Reverend Kevin was saying to the Father, that he was praying to glorify him, but 
He was also praying for us, the disciples, and us as believers that, that we, the welfare of us, because he knew he wasn't going to be around in this world uh, much longer, but he wanted the Father to, to, to bless us and, and take care of us and hope that he had not hope, but pray that he had fulfilled his mission and, and, and completed his work. So verse 21 through 23 reads, may they all be one as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe you sent me. Verse 22, I have given them the glory you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. And lastly, verse 23, I am in them and you are in me so that they may be made completely one that the world may know you have sent me and I have loved them as you have loved me. Real powerful there. And, 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 and the whole context there is, is wonderful how the, the authors of the, of the book here pulled out this segment to show and, and give it a topic of, of pray for glory and pray for unity. And, and we know what unity is. Unity is being, being one. It's, it's being like manner, so to speak. Join at the hip is an old country phrase, so to speak. Join as a whole. And the overarching point I pulled out from this reading this lesson that prevails through all of these scriptures is that Jesus prayed for unity. Therefore, we as believers should pray for unity with God and pray for unity among each other. So all believers should be praying for unity with God and praying for unity among each other as believers. And that's not anything to amuse. Uh, what does unity look like then? Or, or, or what is unity purpose? It looks like, when I, from what I read here, to make it quite simple, what we already know, when we think about unity, we think about the, the Trinity, you know, God the Father, the Son, and the Spirit is God. So the essence of one, that would be the unity. And then I'll quickly fast forward to the church. The church body itself is one Brentwood Baptist Church, is one collective unity of, of, of Christ. It, it has a single mission, even though there are many believers, we all have that single mindset of, 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 of serving God, worshiping God, and sharing the gospel. So Jesus was praying that in his in his verses that as we move along, that He's praying that I'm in you, the Father, and, and you're in me, and I'm praying that they also are, are in both of us. So the, the purpose then of unity, Paul helps us in Philippians 2.2, uh, 2, talk about what the uni unity really means as far as a purpose. But before we, we get there, I wanted to say that I read in the book, and the author puts it in the book, and I thought it was good, that you can't talk about unity if you have a self-interest, you know, that's where the humility comes, put, putting others first. If you're focusing on yourself and you have a self-interest, then you can't, you can't be part of the unity. You can't be part of the team. That's not what the team or effort to fast forward in, in day's term. That's what, not what that's all about. However, and I like this part, because you, you're part of unity, you don't lose your personality. You don't, God still sees us as believers. So in Philippians 2.2 2 that Paul talks about, the purpose of the unity here is that we're all like-minded, that we think in the same way. That's pretty much what, what we are at Brentwood. We have in the same love. Paul talks, if you read those verses, I'm not going to read them. This is a recap of them. And, and, and uh, actually that verse but you really need to read uh, Philippians 1 through 2, really, to get the whole essence. And that number three, we're one united in the spirit, and we have one mind, we one, have one intent, one purpose. Let me go over that again. Number one, we're like-minded. We think the same way. We have the same love, number two. Number three, that we're united in that one spirit. And then number four, we have that, that, that same intent, 
that purpose, that drive, I brought it down to the drive uh, in itself. And, you know, that to me is evident in Brentwood. I don't call, want to call it motto. I don't know what word. Christ is the main attraction. I like, I like that term, where, where Christ is the single focus uh, uh, that the church is focused on. And while we're all members, we, 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 we don't allow our individual uh, desires and interests and self-interest to rise above Christ being the main attraction. Paul also says that uh, Christian unity only happens when we are in God and God is in us. We've all heard that ever since we were young. Right? You know, you've got to be in Jesus and allow Jesus to be in you. In other words, you got to dwell in Christ and Christ needs to dwell in you. And, and, and the author also says that in, that in, order, in order to have Christ to dwell in you, the only way that that can happen is that you have to have a deep, intimate relationship with God. Now, uh, that's what Reverend, the whole lesson talks about the intimacy in a relationship with God. We all know what that intimacy means. You know, it's the closeness that, that we would have. That, that like Reverend Kevin said, that that's unique between you and God. Uh, that's what that intimacy is all about. And, and keeping in mind that we're talking about unity here. I thought it was interesting that they, it, it's amazing to me how we study these lessons and the topic always seemed to fit what's going on in the world today. We don't see a lack of unity. You know, when we when we, we read the paper or turn the TV on or look on the internet, and, and that's what's missing today. So, that, you know, this is a reminder that God wants us as the church to stay focused and not get caught up on the worldly things that go on on the outside. That our mission, like we said, that Paul mentioned in, in Philippians, is to stay like-minded with that same love and spirit and intent. Now, you know, we could talk about this this morning. I said, well, you know, I all, you always have to bring that home to your own heart. And you always have to bring it in your own driveway. And you always, always have to take it inside your own house because that's where all, everything starts. And once you take it in there, then we, we move to, to the church. We move to our relationship with others and how we treat others. And, and we're also talking about prayer, as Reverend uh, Kevin said. We're talking about that conversation with God. So what does it mean? I said, when I was reading this lesson, it'd be good to kind of dab into what does it mean when you say uh, dwell in Christ? Uh, and what does it mean when you say Christ dwells in me? Well, dwelling in Christ, I found, it, it all stems from our faith, you know? Until we have that faith and accept G Lord Jesus Christ, through our faith, we all become children of God at that point. So we're dwelling in Christ. And then at part of that, how we dwell in Christ, we have to leave the old sinful lives behind. When I, when, I, when I think of that terminology, I always use volume one, volume two. I've closed volume one, which was the old sinful life. And I'm now in volume two and I'm serving God. I've confessed my sins. He's restored me and, 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 and now I'm living for him and eternity. That's how, that's how I figure I'm, I'm in Christ. So it gets to be how then does Christ dwell in me? And I said, I hope I make this distinction clear. First of all, we talked about Christ's death and resurrection. That starts it all, he, the victory. And when he got up all out of that grave, that was the, the victory that, that, that was won. We talked about that a year ago. It's amazing how we're going to circle back to that during the Easter holidays, I'm, I'm sure. And we're going to revisit the same topics and discussion we had last year because it doesn't change. God, where it really doesn't change. So, so how does Christ dwell in me? The fact that he, 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 he got up out of that grave and gave me a, 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 a victory and gave me an avenue for salvation. He gives me that option. It's still an option for me. He, that offer. He doesn't force me to take it. I accept salvation. That's how Christ is in me. And then that Holy Spirit, that's how Christ dwells in me. You know, we say that cliche, it's within me 24-7. 
You know, the spirit of God is in all of us. And then that hope of eternity, that, that hope that we have through accepting Christ, through Christ's death, and resurrection, and the, the acceptance of the salvation, that Holy Spirit, and that hope that we live by day to day. And that's why we're here this morning based on that hope that we continue to, to, to love God and follow his word, read these Sunday school lessons and try to apply them. Well, we seek to apply them each and every day. We're still talking about unity here. And, and the author also stepped over and talked about uh, uh, focused, heartfelt prayer. Well, this kind of touched the nerve with me because it, 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 it reflects back to what Reverend Kevin was saying. You know, I've witnessed heartfelt prayers and I've had heartfelt prayers myself and I'm sure you have, you know, and each one of us can define how our, we felt during our heartfelt prayers. But that, that's a part of the spiritual discipline. Can remember, we're still in this unit talking about spiritual uh, 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 discipline, that those heartfelt prayers Gifting your heart out to God, to Jesus, brings us closer. And that's where the intimacy comes in. It increases our relationship with God. James talked in 516 says, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. Now, I, I, I like that. And I said, well, heartfelt prayer when we finish Sunday school and fast forward over to the, the deacons prayers, you know, when those deacons pray, that's a heartfelt prayer. We all know uh, 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 Jeffrey, if he, Deacon Jeffrey, if he's on here, the hallelujah, that's a heartfelt prayer. The mission groups, we don't see those. Uh, some of the prayer groups, the intercessor, Mr. Cephas is on here. The intercessory prayer, I've been a part of that many years ago, the heartfelt prayer on behalf of others. And then we get to, to me, the other side of it, the private heartfelt prayer. That's when I say we're in the closet, uh, when we go in our own closet and do, and do our own prayers. And we learn God fixes or he plans that he sets in our path that at some point in our lives, we're going to need to talk to him. And we're going to need to talk to him, not just casually, as Reverend Kevin said. We're going to need to get out on our knees, however partial it is, but we're going to have to open ourselves up from the deepest part of our hearts and talk to God. And however that is with you, however that is with me, that's the heartfelt prayer. Verses 22 and 23, as I move along to, toward close, we're still talking about unity. And he talked about Jesus sharing his glory. That was part of the uh, uh, topic Reverend Kevin had. That, that he talked about glorifying the Father, the Father glorifying him. And, 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 and what I got from this as put in the lesson itself, one of the first uh, ways that Jesus glorified himself was through the cross. And, and that means for, that we also have a cross to bear. And that, that bearing of the cross is how we live, how we walk and talk and follow out the God's word how we tell others about him that, that, that don't know him. We glorify God in the way we, our bodies, as you know, in the way we talk and act. And all that's coming from the heart. And it all leads to the eternal hope that we have because we have that hope for eternity that God provides for us through his death and resurrection. Lastly, verse 23 talks about praying for love. Sister Ford, that's her, her topic there. But in, 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 in that two, verse 23, he said, Father, I hope that they can see the love that, that between you and I. And, and remember that he's praying for all believers. He's praying for the disciples. So he wants that love to be between the, the disciples. And he wants that love that we would have for each other, the same love that we would have for Jesus and, and God all in one, the whole essence of the unity. As I close in my last, and moving along, the Digging Deeper has a, a recap of, the, of the, how, how we, the dialogue, it talks about the dialogue of prayer. And, and again, dialogue simply means conversation. We all know what that means. 
And, and it, it mentions in that, in that little short recap that uh, the more we pray and more we have dialogue with, with, with God, Jesus, we, we tend to grow closer to him and we have a closer relationship. And I read those and I read the entire message there. And the Holy Spirit, I said, gee, if I was back home growing up, that went on all the time, but they didn't call it dialogue. They, they, in, in honor of Black History Month, and, and I reflect back, then, you know, the, the three songs popped up to me. First one being Sweet Hour Prayer. Sweet Hour Prayer that calls me from a world of care. You got to take time to want to pray. And then this, this, next, this next song, Miss Flon, why you sing it all the time? That was the only song he can sing. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your trouble. And we added, he will hear your faintest cry and he'll answer it by and by. Then you'll feel a little prayer with a turn and he used to twirl and he'll feel a little by fire burning. Then you know that having a little talk with Jesus will make things all right. And at the end, that now I love this song in modern, that you said, let the church say amen, but I love the song, praise him. Praise him because he, he's worthy to be praised. In all things, give him glory. Jesus, blessed Savior, is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen, Sister Ford, Reverend Kevin. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, Brother Walker and Kevin. This section number three says, pray for God's love. And it's found in John 17, 24 through 26. It says, Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am so that they will see my glory, which you have given me, because you loved me before the world's foundation. Righteous Father, the world has not known you. However, I have known you, and they have known that you sent me. I made your name known to them and will make it known, so that the love you have loved me with may be in them and I may be in them. Some Bibles have what the words uh, spoken by Jesus in red letters. Now, this makes it easy to see Jesus speak in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If you don't have that red letter Bible, don't go out and buy it. Just remember to think as you're reading that when you see Jesus said, think about that red letter so that it will make it easy for you to hear Jesus speaking. Jesus often talked with the disciples about the Lord God. In chapters 12 through 17 of John, Jesus is spending special time with his disciples, explaining his connection with God the Father and about what he had come to do and that he would soon go to his Father. As, Pat, as Pastor Ratliff has often told us, it's very important that we read before and after a scripture passage in order to know the context of what is going on. The youth book has a five-day daily devotional of reading the Bible, through a scripture passage and then gives it a commentary. Each lesson devotional is divided into five names. This week's devotional was Jesus teaching the disciples about prayer in Luke 11, one through four. The words of the model prayer or the Lord's prayer in Matthew six, five through 15 are similar, but are in a different context. The Matthew passage is part of chapters five through seven where Jesus is delivering a sermon to a large crowd. The youth book commentary on, on Luke 11, one through four began by explaining that the disciples as faithful Jews had grown up praying consistently and seeing others pray. However, the disciples observed in Jesus's prayers something different than they had ever experienced. Jesus's prayer was not a matter of obligation or repetitious words. Jesus prayed because deep down in his spirit, he longed for the intimacy with his father afforded only by spending time in prayer. The disciples wanted to experience them for themselves. And in verse Luke 11, one, it says, once when Jesus was out praying, as he finished his, his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us how to pray. They wanted to pray like Jesus prayed. In Jesus teaching about prayer, prayer in Matthew and Luke, Jesus starts with our Father, confirming our relationship 
as children of the Father. Many times Jesus speaks of the Father's relationship throughout his special conversation with the disciples in chapters 12 through 17 of John. In this chapter 17 prayer, Jesus began with Father. Have you ever had a moment when you were talking to a crowd of people, but you were able to focus on that one person who seemed most interested in hearing you? Jesus was praying in that small crowd and still focusing on his conversation with his father. He was also talking about the disciples and us. In the beginning of John 14, Jesus tells his disciples, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. Now Jesus prays to the one that will make it happen that his people will be with him. He says, Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am. In Jesus' prayer, there were many phrases that contains the word that or so that. As you read the complete phrase, you see that that or so that introduces a purpose or intent in Jesus' actions. Examples are in that prayer, so that the son may glorify you and so that the world will believe and know you. In verse 24, it is so that they will see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. The book of John is filled with references to God's love. Here, there is a connection between Jesus' glory from his father and the love of his father. Moses went down from the mountain where he had talked with the Lord. And Exodus 34, 35 says, and the children of Israel saw Moses' face glowing. When I think of glory, I think of the magnificent radiance, radiance of the sun in the sky. Jesus' radiant glory from his father is so clearly evident that people are drawn to him. Jesus' reference to before the world's foundation indicates in the beginning was the word. Jesus, the son, was with God the Father. It also describes the eternal, the forever aspect of the Father's love before the world's foundation. Jesus then speaks of his righteous Father. His righteous Father is the standard for all creation because the world is sinful and wants to continue in sin, the world has not known him, the righteous Father. The disciples were proof of Jesus's work. Jesus revealed the Father by saying, Father, I have known you, and they have, they have known that you sent me. And knowing the Father, we must know his name. Jesus says, I made your name known to them and will make it known. In the book of Genesis, we immediately know that there are many gods. The serpent told Eve that when she ate of the fruit that God had told them not to eat, she would be like gods. The Lord God makes it clear that his name is to be distinguished. He is the Lord, Jehovah, I am. And Jesus has made his name known by being Emmanuel, God with us. Kevin, would you please help me out here? So uh, Ms. Ford uh, had asked me, um, my grandmother, um, we had a family member that um, used to switch churches all the time, uh, switch churches all the time. And um, as if she was looking for something like it, it was, if she was looking for God is more present at this church or God is more present at this church. And so I was talking to her about that. Uh, and I always forget this. And I've told the story in our Sunday school class. So she asked me to tell it uh, now. And so when my uh, grandmother was telling me this story, she said, she, she looking for uh, God in the wrong places. She's looking for God in the wrong places. Say, God is in here. And she puts, she always does her hands like this, like uh, right up in, uh, in here, right? You got to know him for yourself. And he's up in, I'm going to scoop back for those, like up in here. And so, so her point was that you can go to different churches, you can do all these other things, but until you know him for yourself up in here, right? Uh, then uh, switching churches is not going to make a difference. And so every once in a while, I'll pass by um, uh, or, or Sister Ford is teaching in our Sunday school class, and she'll say, what is it, Kevin? Up in here, right? So you have to know God for yourself up in here. Amen. 
<laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Amen. And so up in here, I in, in is a small word, but it refers to how deep, in this instance, becoming a part of who I am. Jesus also spoke of in in John 14. Uh, the so that at the end of this prayer, so that the love you have loved me with may be in them and I may be in them. The depth of love of Jesus and our Father is unlike any other love. Their love is consistent and eternal. I am persuaded that nothing can separate me from the love of God. Grandmother's gesture shows the depth, the depth of God being in, inside us. Sometimes a person will hear of a troubling situation and say, I'll pray for you. Or that troubling situation may cause us to ask for prayer of somebody we know who can get a prayer through. In John 17, Jesus was with his disciples just before being taken away and crucified. While, the, while with the disciples, he prayed for himself. He prayed for the disciples with him. And he said in verse 17, 20, I pray not only for, those, for these, but also for those who believe in me through their message. Jesus was talking about future believers. Jesus prayed for us. Jesus is the one that can get that prayer through. So when we need somebody to pray for, we need to ask Jesus to pray for us. Mon this past Monday, I woke up in time to look out that window facing the east to see a clear sky with the beautiful colors as the sun was rising. Tuesday morning, the sun rising seemed more beautiful because there was this beautiful colored contrast of a few clouds. Sometimes I get selfish when I say, Father, you did that sunrise just for me. Prayer is a conversation with, our, with God. In our conversation, I get to know more about God, become more familiar with him. God's word, the Bible, is a major part of God's side of the conversation. God's body language is in what he has done, what he is doing, and what he will do. As we talk, including prayer and reading out his word, I find that I like being around him, being in his presence. I look for him so that I can be in his presence. When I'm not focused on his presence, there are things said or things that happen around me that remind me of him throughout each day. When I observe his creation, his people, his sunshine and rain, and so much more, I think how amazing our father is and how busy he is and still he has time to talk with me. So loved, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Mm. I believe it. Mm. Belief is to, is to take as true, to have confidence in a statement as a promise of, I depend on God. More promises, do not be afraid because I am with you. I will be with you always. I depend on God. Morning by morning, new mercies I see, his loving kindness. Because I am so loved, I can serve others. Because I am so loved, I want others to believe they are so loved too. We do not have to do anything to be so loved because my best would not be good enough to earn it and my worst would not be bad enough to lose it. I depend on being so loved and want to do all that I can to show my deeply, deep, grateful appreciation. During this six weeks of unit two, I continue to encourage you to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, still not as a Bible study, but as your personal time to give you what you need in your desire to become more like Christ. And in turn, you come to know more about God the Father. In John 14, seven, Jesus said, if you had known me, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. As you read, hear the times Jesus prayed. When you read those three Matthew, Mark, four Bible uh, books, in Matthew, Mark, four, um, in, I'm missing. As you read, hear the times Jesus prayed. 
It also shows where Jesus prayed many times as you're reading those, those four Bible books. Jesus talked to his father and let us be concerned mostly about talking with our God and not talking at him. That's it. <laughs> Man, this is for the appreciate it. Y'all, y'all getting to see the full sister for when, when she she corrects herself, she does that thing with her whatever. So that <laughs> uh you, we got we got what you meant and we appreciate you uh your thoroughness uh Amen. In the scripture as well, sister for so uh we really appreciate that. And I, I thank you for allowing me to tell a story about my grandmama. Who got Amen. her shot um uh, Friday? So uh, talk, I heard y'all talking about shot. I got my second shot. For those of you that are gonna get that second shot. Take the day off the next day. I know a lot of y'all retired, so take the day off from being retired the next day because that second shot comes with some, with some, it knocked me down a little bit. Uh, so uh, not to scare you, I'm just preparing you. It, it, you know, get get you get you some get you some rest because uh, uh, it, it definitely uh, caused some uh, some uh, just fatigue. I guess mostly is what I felt more so fatigue, uh, but. Thank God I got a second shot. I just want to, I hadn't done this in a while. I want to get a little to my phone numbers. Um, I, you know, we haven't forgot about y'all. I always say star six. I stopped saying it because nobody really was, was doing it. But you can unmute, you know, star six and say hello or, you know, offer up a prayer or comment. I just don't want y'all to feel like we're not, we don't have any love for y'all. So, you know, 7547-5753-1209-1946. Uh, that's the last four digits of the phone numbers, 43, 75, 85, 94. I can't go because it's over 35 of y'all. But just to let y'all know, we, we have love for you. Please, uh, you know, feel free uh, to hit star six uh, and say hello or, uh, uh, or uh, you know, participate. Uh, we want to let you know, guys, that, that we uh, haven't forgot about you. And then I'm going to get you out of here before I uh, pray. Oh, I, I got somebody who, who's 1946. You ready to say something? I just want to say good morning. Good morning. And uh, yes, sir, I enjoyed all of you. And I just want y'all to pray for me because the oncologist say I can take the the uh, the shot, and then she said, "Well, they need to get further studies." So gotcha. I don't know. Gotcha. I, I'm I'm fighting with that. Gotcha. And brother gotcha. Walker, brother Walker, and sister Walker, they know, and and sister Samantha, yeah. they all know what I've been going through. But I'm just, I, I just don't know. I'm battling with that right now. Amen. 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 Who, and who's speaking? I'm sorry because I, I don't know the voice. They oh, do. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Reverend Kevin. Mm -hmm. This is Alcina Brooks. Miss Brooks. Okay, Miss Brooks. We definitely will add you to the prayer. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Do we? Amen. Do we have a twelve oh nine? I see twelve oh nine has stepped into the room as well. This is just Stella Woodard. I just wanted to be obedient and press star six, but I want you to know that each and every Sunday, I have enjoyed my Sunday school classes. Amen. It is Amen. The work Amen. that you all are doing, it is just beautiful. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Woodard. We appreciate you. And I don't, the Sunday school won't don't start right unless I hear this is Estella Water. Hello. So uh, I, I just want you to let you know you, you're a part of the crew. You don't know it, but if they don't get they don't feel right unless you say good morning. So Amen. So we appreciate you uh, as well. We appreciate you as well. So with I'm so glad. Say Star Six, it worked. I'm telling y'all phone people the Star Six it works. So we learn to win to hear you know y'all out there. Uh, and so as we go throughout these weeks, we just want to hear some some people. Don't, don't be scared. We come up to the stage, right? You know, because some of you can see me on video, but I, you know, a lot of these phone numbers, I don't know them. And we got some phone numbers for 409, some 687s, and we got some people that might not even be in Texas, uh, or at least they got their phone uh, somewhere outside of Texas. So uh, we'd love to uh, to hear from you. So uh, you've heard the prayer request. Before we pray out, uh, I did want to remind you that uh, prayer service is at 9.30. Um, service starts at 10. As you think about giving your tithes and offerings, if you're going to give to the Sunday school, which we would appreciate, we would ask that you give to specific accounts. Those accounts are listed uh, in uh, Glory of His Glorious emails that she sent out. Usually you get them around 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning, but the next morning when you read them, it's in there. I promise you uh, it's in there. That was a little shout out to Glory. Uh, so with that being said, uh, Brother Walker. Amen. Uh, hold on. Come on. 
All right. <laughs> That's Mahalia for you. Yeah. Can y'all hear that? Yeah, we can hear it. Make it all right, yeah. 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 He, and he will. And then you. And then you feel a little prayer will to you. <laughs> Oh, a little fire is burning. Hard. Yeah, you know everything will be all right. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> Got some of y'all moving around. Maybe we need to do some uh, aerobics. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Uh, some hair swinging or something. Come on, yeah, come on. they got those, those feet moving, those yeah, stones. You know, you know, yeah. yeah, that's a that's a piano. That's that hardwood floor. So the hardwood floor, you know, yeah. Y'all know yeah. y'all know, know nothing about that. Yeah. Oh, you hear that old tish jumping? Right? Yes, yeah, sir. Oh. All right, let's let's yeah. pray. Father God, thank you for allowing us to uh, come together. We thank you for the Sunday school. We thank you for yeah. all of the participants. We thank you for these forty-seven. Uh, weeks of Amen. This wonderful fellowship with other saints. Um, God, we just understand that prayer is, is personal. Uh, it's yeah. We have to be present. Father God, we understand that uh, this prayer that we studied today uh, was a prayer for us centuries before we were even uh, existed, but you know we would be here, Father God, and we just thank you. Yeah. Father God, you heard the prayer petition uh, about discernment, whether to take the vaccine or not, and Father God, we just ask and pray and intercede uh, on yeah. behalf of sisters so that uh, you just may give her clear direction and, and speak to her heart and speak to her mind and have her do what you would have her do, Father God. Yeah. God, with consultation through her physician uh, and those that uh, know the science, Father God, but you know the spirit. And God, we just ask that you uh, give her discernment. Father God, we just uh, pray for all of those uh, that are in the presence of our Brentwood Sunday School. And we yeah. ask Give us all discernment as it pertains to this virus and going out and all the things that are we're dealing with in this uh, pandemic. But as we yeah. go throughout this week, we ask uh, that everything we prosper. Yes. We touch prosper. In your son's name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. You know what? I'm, did I forget? I, you know, I don't have my props. Thank you, Gloria. It's communion. Get your, get your, get your, your grape juice or wine. I mean, you're at home, you know, whatever, right? Grape juice or wine, your unleavened bread uh, and uh, uh, your crackers, basically. <laughs> uh, get that ready. So today is keeping, you know, this is the first Sunday. I'm, I'm off, you know what I'm saying? I'm off, so I apologize. Uh, so uh, get, your, get your communion uh, uh, ready. And then um, this little... They're making our Mr. Church House a little bit, I know. I know we can't bump like that at Brentwood because we don't have no hardwood floors. We got carpet because we sophisticated. We got carpet, but y'all remember that hardwood floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got the beam foundation, so there's some air between the foundation and the ground. So you can hear, you had them, them Stacey Adams and them, them shoes. Come on, man. Yeah, that's the echo. You don't have that same echo. echo. <laughs> For those of you that may want to know, that's Miss Mahalia Jackson. Yeah. Singing that. Singing that. So I just had to give you a little something right there. Y'all know me. Amen. All right. See y'all next week. Amen.